This is Twit. Let's quickly run through some of the other announcements that were made at RSA. Uh, there were two re security researchers by the name of Yamir, Yam Yair Amit and Adi Sharabani who disclosed an iOS attack that would affect iOS 8 and above to enter a constant reboot state when they were exposed to a Wi-Fi signal with a malformed security certificate. Now, they combine this with the Ygate exploit, which is well known, which can force iOS devices to automatically connect to a network. Uh, they created a access point that used that exploit along with a malformed security uh, certificate to make any iOS device within range of that wireless signal to constantly reboot. Now, that's a, that was an interesting an interesting hack. It wasn't permanent. It doesn't really brick the device, but uh, it was it was a uh, it was kind of fun to see that happen. Dan Gear was also at the conference, as uh, Chibert and I mentioned. We both had a chance to speak with him at Black Hat 2014, and he had suggested that we start moving to a model where we're releasing software on a more continuous basis so that we can take advantage of the honeymoon phase. That's that, that period. It could be weeks, it could be months after new software is released when security researchers are combing through the code and combing through the software to find out if it has any vulnerabilities. His suggestion was that if we update quick enough, we will always stay in that honeymoon phase. Now, he altered that towards the end of his presentation to say, yes, of course, there's a downside that it never gets secure and it never gets really stable because of code churn. But he was wondering if it was possible to create code that could randomize at runtime. It was such a system would kill the current trends of attacks because you would never really have two installations that would be the same. You could create an exploit for a system, but the second it rebooted, it would no longer work. I think the big news, however, the one that we I do want to cover on this show, is that RSA President Amit Yoran told the conference attendees that we needed to look at security in a new way. Specifically, he unf unveiled a five-fold plan for security. Now, here's the quote that I, I really liked. I was listening to his presentation last night. He said, We have sailed off the map, my friends. Sitting here and awaiting instructions, it's no longer an option. And neither is what we've been doing. Continu continuing to sail on with our existing maps, even though we know the world has changed. Now, he has brought up a problem that we've been talking about on the show when we talked about the death of the firewall, that it's no longer an option to have perimeter security. The old maps are all about perimeter security. The old maps are all about having high-priced hardware that keep people out of our networks, and once you get in, you're in a trusted zone. Well, of course, that's no longer going to cut the mustard. And he said it's time for us to abandon that, but not just abandon perimeter security, but, and let me run through these, these, this five-fold plan really quickly. Number one, to stop believing in the silver bullet. There is no security that is 100% effective. Even advanced protections will fail, and we now need to assume that the attacker has breached our security. That's something, again, that we've talked about on Twite quite a bit. His second thing, and I'm paraphrasing all of this, is that it's time for full, continuous packet capture and 100% visibility of all endpoints. These are no longer nice to have, but are essential in modern security. He wants us to look at the bigger picture. Current strategies are focused on squashing intrusions as rapidly as they happen, but more and more, and he pointed out to Sony for this, we're seeing that attackers use obvious attacks to hide the less obvious. And if we attempt to stop every attack, then we're just teaching them how to breach our systems. His third point was that we need to sort out authentication and identity. It's about time. We should no longer allow overprivileged and dormant accounts to exist. His fourth point was that we need to use threat intelligence. Threat intelligence has a better view of the patterns of attack and can probably predict the next intrusion into our system before we see it. And the last point, and this is the one that got people thinking, was you can't be strong everywhere. It's time to rank your organizational assets and determine where dollars will be spent to protect them. Curtis, let me throw this over to you first. This is, I mean, it's, it's not an action plan, but this pretty much sums up the things that we've been talking about on Twite for security for the past three years. Oh, absolutely. And, and in many ways, this isn't new. You know, I was working with some security folks six years ago who were saying essentially the same thing, that you must assume that your system is vulnerable. And I think for us, that means not only the network of the enterprise, but individual endpoints as well. And so 
you, you're, you're left to do two things really well. One is to make sure that when an attacker gets in, there is no way for them to use the data they might find. And this gets back to the notion of encryption that we have had for as long as I've been part of TWIA. The other is that what we need are basically very active, very good intrusion detection and prevention systems where it is constantly monitoring the activity and flow of data, not only into our systems, but within and going out of our systems so that any kind of unusual behavior can be flagged and dealt with very quickly. The problem, you know, let's, let's think about Sony. If they had discovered the problem in the first hour, then none of us would ever have heard of this. The issue was that an attacker got in and was able to run around in Sony's network for months before they realized they had a problem. So being able to recognize what's going on, make sure that the data isn't useful. And um, I think that that number five is an interesting one. That, that's one I would love to talk about because I think you will have people who argue against that. But it's going to be interesting from an economic standpoint to see which side wins.